all recruiters now in multinationals in domestic industries are looking for professionals who are able to decipher tax regulations who are comfortable with tax computation and tax calculations if you have the right skill set in taxation that can open a lot of doors for you in different industries for example in consulting having worked in consulting myself i can tell you that consulting is expanding at a rapid pace and there are a lot of opportunities for you i'm sure some of you might be aware of the split in ey which is going to there's going to be a great expansion in consulting and it's likely that other big firms will follow suit as well so you partner with us to help build you the right skill set imbibe the right values and trust me you're waiting for a glorious glorious career in finance and taxation welcome to this live demo session on the acca uk tax exam i am tarush jain a proud fintrammer and your faculty for the acca uk tax exam just a brief background on myself i am an acca member since 2020 and i'm presently working with onsen young in their business consulting team this is my second stint at ey i've also worked in the international tax and transfer pricing department where i handled everything from tax compliances to litigation to tax advisory and so on so i welcome you all to this session we'll be covering a number of things in this session first of all we'll be giving you a brief on the acca uk tax exam why is it important what kind of opportunities you can expect trust me this is a, a very exciting area and once you're an acca you can expect a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors opening for you in in this in in taxation we will cover the curriculum of the acca uk tax exam we will give you a brief on the acca exam exam structure and we will cover how fintram can assist you in making sure you cracking the march 22 20 uh, 23 attempt we have a comprehensive package for you that includes live sessions with me lots of illustrations lots of uh, uh, doubt based uh, concept based questions we'll have a revision boot camp with a question, uh, question marathon including questions from the exam kit and past exam questions we'll have a mock exam we'll have dedicated doubt sessions and i can assure you after these sessions with us you will be exam ready and ready to take on any challenge in the exam in march 22 23 right finally we will also cover one chapter the first chapter of the acca uk tax exam so you can get a sense of what to expect in the live sessions my teaching style uh, my pace and the the kind of content we have uh, in, in prepared for you so let's begin i want this session to be interactive to be collaborative any questions you may have just raise your hand through the tools uh, on zoom or just feel free to uh, speak or put in the chat box i will stop and we'll have a discussion so let's make this interactive and let's make this fun so right let's dive in i'll share my screen just a minute so what is the acca uk tax exam all about the acca uk tax exam aims to equip you with the knowledge and skills that are needed so that you understand the uk tax system as it's applicable to individuals companies and groups of companies in the uk now this is a very very important aspect of finance in fact this is a core area of finance and trust me all recruiters now in multinationals in domestic industries are looking for professionals who are able to decipher tax regulations who are able to who are comfortable with tax computation and tax calculations so once if you have the right skill set in taxation that can open a lot of doors for you in different industries for example in consulting having worked in consulting myself i can tell you that consulting is expanding at a rapid pace at a rapid pace and there are a lot of opportunities for you i'm sure some of you might be aware of the split in ey which is going to there's going to be a great expansion in consulting and it's likely that other big firms will follow suit as well similarly multinationals are looking to build internal capacities to strengthen their tax function so they need competent professionals and with the kind of complexities in the global tax system increasing every passing year all multinational corporations are looking for competent tax professionals to manage their tax affairs 
and they're looking to fill positions not just in India but across different parts of the world. And ACC is one qualification that will help you get get your foot in the door in all of those locations. So you partner with us to help build you the right skill set, imbibe the right values, and trust me, you're waiting for a glorious, glorious career in finance and taxation. So what is the ACCA UK tax curriculum all about? The ACCA UK tax curriculum is divided into six areas, six large areas. We will discuss each of them individually so that you get a feel of what to expect. And any doubts you may have on this, just feel free to ask, okay? So the first area is the is very simple, very basic understanding of the UK tax system and administration. In this, in this syllabus area, we will learn about the overall function and purpose of taxation in a modern economy, the sources of tax law and practice, that is the structure of the UK tax and administration, the, the, the different arms, the difference between direct and indirect system, where it derives its powers from and so on. We will cover some of these topics in our first chapter today itself. So you will get a sense of the basics of the UK tax system today itself. In this syllabus area, we will also cover the self-assessment system in the UK and filing tax returns. We'll, and we'll obviously cover the due dates for tax payments and other compliances. You will get uh, in today's session a feel of this so that uh, by the end of the session, you, you have an understanding of what the basics are. Second, guys, this is a very, very important chapter, income tax and national insurance contribution liabilities. It's very highly, uh, very high chances that a 15 mark question in the ACCA tax exam comes from this uh, syllabus area. And be rest assured, there are a lot of concepts, but we'll be covering each of these concepts in detail in, the, in our live sessions. We will cover a lot of illustrations. We'll do a lot of MCQs and we will do a lot of practice questions in our question marathon during the revision bootcamp. I can assure you, you pay attention, you put in the required effort and you will be cracking the exam in March 23. So the, uh, the briefly, the syllabus area covers the scope of income tax for individuals, how to compute income from different sources of, uh, that, is inclu that includes income from employment, income from self-employment, property rentals, investment income, and so on. We will learn how to compute the total taxable income of, a, of, of an individual. And ultimately, what is, the, what is that income tax liability based on the different uh, tax labs available under the UK tax system? We will also learn about national insurance contributions for employment and self-employment persons. We'll cover this very briefly in our chapter today, but just so that you have an idea, national insurance contributions are taxes levied on individuals and businesses in the UK, so that that can, so to that finances the welfare schemes for UK residents. So this is something that every individual has to pay, so that they can avail welfare schemes from the state. We will also learn about the different exemptions and reliefs available to the individuals, uh, so to minimize the tax liability under the UK tax system. Sorry, next syllabus areas, chargeable gains for individuals. Again, a very important topic. It's likely that you will get a number of questions in the exam from the syllabus area. It's also likely, it, it's pos also possible that you get a 10 mark question from this uh, syllabus area. So this is a very important concept and we'll cover this in detail during our live sessions. But just to give you a brief idea, this is, the scope of capital gains taxation, that is capital gains on uh, that arises on disposal of assets. We will learn the principles of computing these gains and losses. We will learn the how to compute the gains and losses on the disposal of movable and immovable property like land, buildings, cars, etc. And we will also learn how to compute gains and losses on the disposal of shares and other securities in, in, in the stock market. We will also learn about the computation of capital gains tax for an individual. And finally, as with everything, we we'll learn exemptions and reliefs available for individuals to reduce their tax liability. There are a lot of exemptions, a lot of reliefs available. So this is a very important topic and we will be covering this in great detail. We will we'll be making sure that all your concepts 
are reinforced and internalized very clearly by the time uh, you are uh, supposed to give the exam. So be rest assured, all of this will be covered in very, very great detail. The next is also a very, very important chapter, inheritance tax. Inheritance tax is taxes that are paid on the death of an individual when uh, his estate is transferred to their spouses or to the relatives as the case may be. This is a very interesting chapter as well, uh, particularly because this is something that we don't learn in the Indian context. Uh, context. So this was very interesting for me. That may or may not be the case for you. But nonetheless, this is a very interesting topic and with a lot of lot of concepts, a lot of new concepts that you might be, that you will be introduced to. And again, you will get a number of questions. It's possible that you get uh, a 10 mark question from this uh, syllabus area, but be rest assured that you will get questions worth six to eight marks for sure from this from this uh, syllabus area. So this is something that you have to prepare really well. And we'll, we'll make sure that you prepare these well in our live sessions and in our question marathon. So in our inheritance tax, we'll cover the scope and principles of inheritance tax, the tax liabilities on chargeable lifetime transfers and transfers on the death of an individual. We'll understand the difference between, between these two types of transfers, that is chargeable lifetime transfers and transfers on the death of an individual and compute the tax and how to compute the tax liability in each of these cases. We will learn about the different exemptions and reliefs available. Again, it's a slightly technical area, so we'll have to pay attention during the classes. But we make sure we'll make sure all your concepts are hundred percent clear by the time you're ready for the exam. And finally, we will cover the responsibility and due dates of tax liability. Fifth area is corporation tax, guys. Again, very, very, very important chapter. A fifteen mark question will most likely will come from this area. So you will have to be, uh, you will have to be good at this. And also guys, one thing that you have, you to offer you a perspective, this can help you set up, uh, this can lay a foundation for an eventual corporate career with multinationals because they are themselves grappling with issues of corporation tax. And if tax professionals like yourself are comfortable and are with, with corporation tax, that will that will help you a lot in your eventual career in finance. So this is a very important topic. We'll cover this in great detail during the sessions. We'll cover the scope of corporation tax. We'll cover the, how to compute taxable total profits, which is different from accounting profits. So we'll learn the difference between taxable total profits under the tax system, which is different from accounting profits. We'll learn how, how to compute chargeable gains for companies. Just like individuals, companies are also liable to pay chargeable, are also uh, uh, liable to pay chargeable gains. So we'll learn about that. We'll learn about the computation of corporation tax liability, the effects of group structure for corporation tax purposes. Again, this is something that will help you in an eventual corporate career in finance and in taxation. So we'll, I, I want you to be super attentive when we take these sessions when we cover this in our live sessions. And finally, just like with every other topic, we'll cover the exemptions and reliefs available to the corporations to reduce their tax liability. Finally, a smaller area, we will, uh, a simpler syllabus area is value added tax. It's possible you get a couple of questions from the syllabus area. It's possible you get a theory question from this, but this is very straightforward. And if you put in the required effort, these are very easy marks for you to get. So just focus on, on understanding the concepts and you will be able to crack the syllabus area. We will cover the registration requirements for VAT, the computation of VAT liabilities, and the, any special schemes that may be introduced by the UK government and their eventual effect on taxation. So this was it, guys. This was the curriculum that we intend to cover during our live sessions. We will cover we will we'll get a, a brief idea today when we cover the first chapter, but I hope I was clear to you in, in the scope of this, uh, of the ACCA UK tax exam, how it plays with your career, how, how it ties in with your career and the kind of efforts that you're required to put in each of the syllabus area. So if you have any doubts, please let me know or uh, we'll move on to the exam structure. Any doubts? I think there is a question. Uh, 
हिंदी में भी कर सकते हैं आई विल ट्राई टू आई विल ट्राई टू हम स्विच बिटवीन इंग्लिश एंड हिंदी बट जस्ट टू फॉर एवरीबडी विल कीप इट इन इंग्लिश बट वट एवर डाउट्स यू हैव पर्सनली आई कैन सॉल्व इन हिंदी मुझे हिंदी कोई कोई टेंशन नहीं है हम हिंदी में भी बात कर सकते हैं अगर सब हिंदी में कंफर्टेबल है तो मैं हिंदी में भी स्विच कर सकता हूँ लेकिन जो भी आपके डाउट्स हैं जो भी आपके क्वेश्चंस हैं मैं वो हिंदी में सॉल्व करूंगा इंग्लिश uh, में इसलिए बेटर है क्योंकि हमें एग्जाम इंग्लिश में देना है इसलिए इंग्लिश में अगर आप समझेंगे तो बेटर है वरना जो भी डाउट्स हैं और जो भी आपके क्वेरीज हैं वो मैं हिंदी में सॉल्व करूंगा जो भी आपके मैं मैं ये मेक श्योर sure करूंगा कि आपके कॉन्सेप्ट जितने क्लियर हैं वो मैं आपको हिंदी में भी समझा पाऊँ जैसे आपके कॉन्सेप्ट so, अगर आपके कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर होंगे तो आपके एग्जाम में भी परफॉर्मेंस अच्छा रहेगा ठीक है तो हम तो आई स्विच बिटवीन हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश अभी भी जैसे हम बात कर रहे हैं आई कीप स्विचिंग बिटवीन हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश सो दैट यू फील कम्फर्टेबल बट या बी रेस्ट श्योर दैट आपको कोई टेंशन आपको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगी समझने में कॉन्सेप्ट तो एग्जाम स्ट्रक्चर पे आते हैं दी ए सी सी ए एग्जाम स्ट्रक्चर इज अ थ्री आर एग्जामिनेशन तीन घंटे का एग्जाम है एंड यू विल हैव कॉम्पिटेशन एंड थियरी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन बोथ राइट सो एंड द क्वेश्चन विल बी बोथ सीनारियो बेस्ड एंड केस स्टडी बेस्ड और तीन सेक्शन में डिवाइडेड है डिवाइडेड इंटू थ्री सेक्शन एंड विल कवर ईच ऑफ दीज सेक्शन गिव यू ब्रीफ ऑन ईच ऑफ दीज सेक्शन इन द सेशन टूडे सेक्शन वन सेक्शन वन इज फिफ्टीन ऑब्जेक्टिव टाइप क्वेश्चन ऑफ टू मार्क्स ईच तो पंद्रह क्वेश्चन होंगे एमसीक्यूज मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन दो मार्क्स ईच के और ये किसी भी सिलेबस एरिया से आ सकते हैं दे केन कवर एनी ऑफ द एरियाज अंडर द करिकुलम सम ऑफ दैम विल बी वेरी सिंपल वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड एंड इफ यू हैव इफ द कॉन्सेप्ट आर क्लियर यू विल बी एबल टू आंसर दैम सम ऑफ दैम यू विल हैव टू डू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ कैलकुलेशन ऑन द साइड एंड यू विल बी एबल टू क्रैक इट सो इफ Trust me, your concepts are clear. These are very, very easy. Thirty marks for you to get. So make sure you are attentive during the live sessions for these concepts. Section two will be three objective test cases. Uh, objective test cases will present the scenario, and each of these scenario will have five MCQs of two marks each. So this is again thirty uh, marks based on three scenarios. Uh, this can again cover any areas under the curriculum, but यहाँ पे आपको थोड़ा you have to be your concept need to be strong because the, here you will have to apply the concepts, right? It's not just about a uh, theory, simple theory or simple computation. You will have to understand and apply the concepts and uh, answer the questions accordingly. So a lot will do. A, will make sure that you understand the concepts deep enough. and you practice a lot of questions during the revision boot camp during uh, the question marathon and that your concepts are internalized enough that you are uh, you are able to understand and, and apply all the concepts and crack this section of the accca uk tax exam section 3 is the constructed response section so ek we will have a one 10 mark question that can cover any areas of the curriculum and you will have two 15 mark questions that will that i told you will cover will focus on income tax that is syllabus area b and corporation tax and syllabus area e so these are questions that you will have to these are not mcqs you will have to make the computation you will have to show the calculations you will have to explain your answers in detail so that you get the uh, get the required marks and this is where the question marathon comes in this is where revision boot camp comes in we will make sure this is where the mock exam comes in we will make sure that you practice so many questions you practice from the exam kit as well as from past exams and that you are ready to attempt any question that is thrown at you by the examiner during the acc exam we will make sure that we do a lot of questions a lot of illustrations in the class so that you understand the concepts and we make sure that the concepts are reinforced during the question marathon and during the mock exams so be attentive be interactive ask a lot of questions and you will be ready for this exam right any doubts on this we can move forward any doubts any comments any observations that you may have
please feel free to share. No, okay. So again, uh, FinTram offers a very comprehensive package for the March 22, 23, uh, 23 exams. Remember guys, FinTram is a gold approved ACCA learning partner and we will be your partner and collaborator for the exam uh, in March. Remember guys, the March, the exam date for ACCA UK tax is 7th March, 2023. So there's not a lot of time left. I would want you to register for the classes immediately so that you can get the benefits of the live online sessions where we'll cover all the syllabus areas in great detail. We'll make sure that all the recordings are available to you as well in case you miss any live sessions. We will have a revision bootcamp uh, to ensure that uh, key examinable concepts are revised before uh, you give the exam so that you have one dedicated you will have one dedicated document with all the examinable concepts. So that is reinforced and constantly internalized. We will do a question marathon in where each of the sections of the exam, there are three sections. We'll do a question marathon for each of these sections from the exam kit, from past exam questions, so that you know the kind of questions you can expect in the exam and, and you're prepared for everything and anything. Uh, हाँ हाँ इंग्लिश इंग्लिश हिंदी हम स्विच करते रहेंगे कोई टेंशन नहीं है जो भी आपकी डाउट्स होंगे डाउट रेजोल्यूशन सेशंस बहुत डेडिकेटेड होंगे वन ऑन वन हम जितना आपको सपोर्ट चाहिए मैं ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन आपके लिए अवेलेबल होऊंगा जो आपको डाउट्स होगा जो हिंदी में होगा बहुत आराम से बहुत पेशेंटली हम आपके डाउट्स क्लियर करेंगे बूट कैम्प में सारे कॉन्सेप्ट हम हिंदी में भी बताएंगे इंग्लिश में भी बताएंगे क्वेश्चन मैराथन में हम सारे चीजें बहुत डिटेल में कवर करेंगे और मॉक एग्जाम होंगे हम सिलेबस एरिया होपफुली फर्स्ट वीक ऑफ फेबर तक सारा कवर कर लेंगे एंड देन एक दो वी स्पेंड फाइव टेन डेज ऑन द रिविजन बुट कैम्प विद की एग्जामिनेबल क्वेश्चन विद द क्वेश्चन मैराथन एंड वी डू अ मॉक एग्जाम प्रॉपर मॉक एग्जाम in the third or fourth week in the third or fourth week of february so that you have one full fledged mock exam one full fledged exam training before the eventual exam on march 7th boot camp include hai course mein bilkul boot camp sab kuch course mein include hai jab aap register karenge to aapke paas to aapko online session milega aapko revision boot camp milega aapko question marathon milega doubt resolution session milenge aapko mock exam milega सब कुछ सेशंस में सब कुछ ये आपके कोर्स में इंक्लूडेड होगा और जो भी आपको डाउट्स हैं आपको हम पेशेंटली सारे सॉल्व करेंगे ठीक है एग्जाम डेट अगेन मैं फिर से ये बोलूंगा एग्जाम डेट बहुत दूर नहीं है सात मार्च को है एग्जाम हमें बहुत सारे कॉन्सेप्ट्स करने हैं हमें बहुत सारा क्वेश्चन करने हैं रिवाइज रिविजन बोर्ड कैंप में हमें मॉक एग्जाम देना है तो आई वुड वॉन्ट यू गैस टू रजिस्टर नाउ लाइव सेशन स्टार्ट हम दोनों फॉलो करते हैं तो वट एवर नोट्स वी गिव यू आर गोइंग टू बी इनफ जो भी हम नोट्स आपको दे रहे हैं जो भी हम क्वेश्चंस आपको दे रहे हैं यू यू वुड नीड एनीथिंग एल्स अगर आपको कुछ और रेफर करना है तो आप वो भी रेफर कर सकते हैं बट जो हम नोट देंगे दैट शुड बी इनफ फॉर योर एग्जाम तो लाइफ स्टेशन गाइज द स्टार्टिंग सून वील हैव फोर सेशन अ वीक we'll have weekday sessions in the morning we have weekday ses weekend sessions in the afternoon so that you have the whole day to you for you to revise and study yourself to reinforce any concept to to kind of come back to me with your doubts and so on but uh, ye hum char sessions karenge uh, ek hafte mein so that we cover the elaborate syllabus area that's uh, that's going to be uh, that's going to be examined in in march so register now please register now you can uh, reach out to the fintram team through phone or through email and they will help you out in the registration process you can also look at their website uh, where you can register you can do an online register for the courses 
you can reach out to me on linkedin for now and you can check out my credentials and some of the work i've done in the past and once you've registered for the sessions you will have complete unfiltered access to me jo aapke doubts honge jo aapko assistance chahiye hogi uske liye main 24 ghante available hunga theek hai to agar aur koi doubts hain to hum wo bhi clear kar lete hain uske baad we'll start the first chapter of the uk tax curriculum any other doubts guys i hope everybody is clear so okay let's start with the first chapter make sure any question here f6 fee uh you can reach out to the uh, fintran team they will tell you all that that's needed on the fee aur kya system rahega jo fee ke questions hain wo aap please direct it to the fintran team wo aapko sab registration mein fee process mein sab help kar denge if uh, okay any other questions great so the first chapter of the acca uk tax curriculum is the basics of the uk tax system again this is a very simple straight forward theory based chapter with a couple of important concepts and if you're lucky you'll get simple questions from this chapter and it will be uh, two or four marks that you can easily get in the exam is agar is chapter se question aayenge to do ya char marks aapko bahut aasani se mil sakte hain so just be attentive ask any questions that you have in this session and i'm sure by the end of it you will have a very strong idea of what the uk tax system is all about so let's dive in what is the purpose of a taxation system right there are two main purposes behind uh, the establishment of a taxation system a government taxation system ke uh, establish karne mein do main reasons hote hain ek hote hain economic reasons so taxation policies influence economic factors such as influence inflation employment levels investments and so on they are also used to influence behavior of individuals for example agar hum cigarettes pe tax lagate hain cigarettes pe tax badhate hain to unki consumption kam ho jayegi similarly if we increase the if we reduce the taxes on cars they will the the sales of cars may may increase and that that may bring more investment to the country so that's how taxation policies affect uh, the economics of a nation the next purpose of a taxation is social justice social justice are used to ta- uh, social justice as in taxation policies are used to accumulate and redistribute wealth in a country we so every government wants to make sure that all the communities in the country have access to some basic amenities right to so, uske liye taxation use hota hai ki hum jo taxes collect kare usko se sab sabka welfare kar paye some main principles of the redistribution of wealth include a progressive taxation system under a progressive taxation system as income rises so does the proportion of income tax paid basically suppose income tax slabs hai under the uk slab under the uk uh, tax system the slabs are uh, towards the if an individual is making 37000 pounds they are taxed at a certain rate and if they are making above 37000 pounds they are taxed at a higher rate so this is an example of a progressive taxation system similarly you have regressive taxation system which are that is taxation which is charged uniformly irrespective of the income of owner for example tax charged on petrol so agar koi koi bhi pet, koi bhi petrol le raha hai petrol pump se usko 10% tax ta, 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 dena hoga that is that is uh, consistent and uniform irrespective uski income kya hai so this is called regressive taxation system proportional taxation system the proportion of tax remains constant even as income rises so there may be a system of taxation where every individual is required to pay 10 or 20% of tax depending on whatever his income is so agar aapki 10000 ki income hai to bhi 10000 pound ki income hai to bhi aapko 10% tax dena hai agar aapki 2 lakh pound ki bhi income hai to bhi aapko 10% tax dena hai to ye proportional taxation system hai 
right? Finally, it's the ad valorem principle. The ad valorem principle is taxes which are calculated as a percentage of the item value. Basically, say 20% VAT calculated, 20% uh, VAT uh, that is on most goods sold in the UK. So, if any uh, individual is taking supplier se goods, then it will include 20% VAT include karke dega. that is known as ad valorem principle. So these are some of the purposes of a taxation system, right? Now let's go and let's go dive into the UK tax system. What are the different types of taxes administered under the UK tax system? First of all, the UK tax system is administered by the her, by Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, that is HMRC. So John, that is the department that controls and supervises all areas of tax law. And they come, they issue, they levy the following taxes. Income tax, as we learned, it's payable by individuals on their earnings and investments. National insurance uh, contributions, again, payable by individuals and businesses in relation to their employees. What I told you earlier, this is to finance the welfare schemes of UK. And this is paid by everyone. Capital gains tax, what we discussed, payable on the disposal of capital assets. Inheritance tax, Again, as we discussed, payable by executors on the value of the estate of a person who is deceased. Deceased means that he is deceased. Again, I also said that there are also inheritance taxes payable in respect of certain gifts during an individual lifetime. These are known as chargeable lifetime transfers. We will study detail mein when we get into inheritance tax. But inheritance tax is a very important Taxes uh, tax levied by the HMRC. Corporation tax, again, it's payable by companies on their incomes and gains. Value added tax, as we learned, that's payable on the supply of goods and services by the final customer. Okay, doubt happen. Okay, national insurance. Thank you, Deeraj, for your question. National insurance contributions are payable by individuals on their earnings and also payable by businesses in relation to their employees. So businesses are, uh, are uh, required to pay certain uh, taxes that is based on the, the, the salary they're paying to their employees. So individuals are required to pay individually as well. And businesses are also required to pay national insurance contributions in respect of the salary they pay to their employees. National insurance contributions are basically taxes that are levied that finances the welfare schemes of the UK of the UK government. Now the UK government is running many welfare schemes like pensions to all residents, like uh, uh, the NHS, the National Health Service, that is the free health service in the UK, right? So that is financed by the national contri insurance contributions received by individuals, uh, paid by individuals and businesses in relation to their employees. So this is a very important tax that kind of finances the 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 welfare system in the UK. Do you understand? So, uh, yes, uh, basic understanding I got. But is it somewhat similar to the TDS that the government of India deducts over the allowances that they give? Uh, so it's similar to the cess uh, that the in, in the government of India. Uh, okay, got it. Got it. Education cess, higher education cess, so then. Hanji, got. Ah, uh, so that's insurance, national insurance contribution there. Okay. So next, I, any more questions? Great. Great, guys, just keep asking me questions uh, so that your concepts are clear. Direct and indirect taxation. Again, this is a very important topic. You might get a question from this and it will be very easy for you to do this. Direct taxations, again, which is ta taxation which are payable directly by the tax taxpayer to HMRC. That is direct based on income or profits or value of assets disposed through sale, gift, or inheritance. So, jaha individual khud uh, tax, HMRC ko tax de raha hai, wo direct taxation ho gaya. Indirect taxation, on the other hand, it's it's a collected by taxpayers, by intermediaries, and paid to the HMRC. For example, agar ek individual ne, they bought some goods from a supplier and they paid VAT on those goods that VAD will be collected by the supplier and paid by the supplier to the HMRC. So there is an indirect system that while the individual is paying tax, 
but the uh, HMRC receives it from the supplier. So that is a form of indirect tax. So VAT is an indirect tax. Every other tax, like income tax, corporation tax, capital gains tax, inheritance tax that is payable directly by the individual is a direct tax. So just to give you a quick illustration, you will get state whether the following taxes are direct or indirect. Corporation, direct tax, capital gains, direct tax, income tax, direct tax, and value added is an indirect tax. Now, what is the structure of the UK tax system? As we mentioned, the HMRC is the UK government department that controls and administers all areas of tax law. At the head of the HMRC are commissioners. Just say income tax commissioners, hote hai, waise hi, uh, HMRC mein commissioners, hote hai, jinki duty hai to implement the tax law and oversee tax administration. They are assisted by someone called the officers of revenue and customs. These are known as ORC, who assist the commissioners in their duty. And they can also assist the taxpayers in the queries they may have on compliance or computation and so on. Or jo humne self assessment system ki baat ki thi. Now, under the UK SAS system, the responsibility of reporting the correct amount of taxable income and paying the correct amount of tax at the appropriate due date is the responsibility of the individual taxpayer himself. They can, of course, take assistance from the ORCs and the commissioners and HMRC to resolve their queries. But uh, reporting and paying the taxes is their duty under the, uh, under the system. This uh, system, where it is the responsibility of the individual themselves, is known as the self-assessment system. So uh, under the UK SAS system, they are re responsible for paying, reporting and paying the taxes themselves. Now, what are the sources of tax law? Tax law is the statute law or the tax legislation. Adherence to the statute or the tax legislation is mandatory. It is updated every year by the Annual Finance Act. Annual Finance Act is like the budget uh, that the government of India introduces every year. Just like that, the UK government introduces the Annual Finance Act where they talk about and uh, where they uh, release the taxation policies and, and uh, public finance policies of the next of the upcoming financial year. Statutory instruments are may also be issued where detailed notes are required on an area of tax legislation. So the government may introduce some instruments to ensure that there is no ambiguity, there is no isara jo wo explain karna chahi hai tax legislation wo clearly ho ek guidance ki through. Case law is again decisions made in tax cases brought before the courts. So it's possible that some areas of tax law are ambiguous. So pe, ki jahan pe, uh, law is not clear, nahi hai, pe courts ki ruling hum follow karte hai. So these rulings, jo courts hai, are binding and they provide guidance on the interpretation of tax legislation. HMRC themselves uh, issue some guidance to explain the proper implementation of tax law. They also issue statements of practice on how to how how they intend to apply the tax law. If agar koi naya issue uh, release ho hai, annual finance act mein, they will issue a SOP, like the statements of practice ki aise hum implement karna, uh, aise hum implement karenge isko. So these are like periodically issued by HMRC to uh, to provide guidance on the implementation. Extra statutory concessions. These are very interesting because they set out circumstances in which the HMRC says that they will not apply the strict letter of the law. They, in this, basically, HMRC says that uh, we will not counter what the tax law is saying. So we will not go against what the tax law is saying, but we will apply it in a manner that is not totally unfavorable to the individual. If you have a lot of tax liability on uh, uh, provision, ki se, to hum usko thoda leniently apply it. So, what are the issues that we have to leniently do? What is the guidance for extra statutory concessions? Mein deta hai. I hope this is clear. Internal guidance manuals, again, these are HMRC's own manuals which are available to the public and they provide explanations of tax law in layman language. So, in normal language, we will explain what we have to implement. Karte Detailed technical guidance. 
is again these are again one of the uh, instruments that HMRC is issues to explain the tax provisions in a detailed manner. Now the interaction of the UK tax system and the overseas tax systems. Now guys, this is an area that I have worked in very, very great detail myself at EY. I also have a degree in international taxation from the Chartered Institute of Taxation in UK. So this is something that's, uh, that's a concept that you must understand that it's possible that a UK resident, who, uh, he has income from in different parts of the world. He has He's earning income from different parts of the world. And it's possible that due to difference in tax system of the two countries of, or the number of countries, he's, uh, that income is taxed under two different systems. So under the UK tax system as well, because the UK tax system says that uh, a UK resident will be taxed on their worldwide income. While that income is also charged in where, where it's being earned. So the source country mein jahan pe wo income earn ho rahi hai, wo country bhi tax levy kar sakti hai. So this situation to avoid karne ke liye, the UK government has entered into double taxation agreements with a lot of countries. These agreements between UK and other countries, they decide how an individual or companies will be taxed. Now they, they supersede the domestic law and they, in some cases, they may exempt overseas income from tax in the UK. And in some cases, they might provide relief. So they might provide deduction of the tax already paid abroad. And uh, this is to ensure that no income is taxed twice. And in case there is no, while they would have double taxation agreements with most important countries, in case they don't have a double taxation agreement, there are provisions in the domestic law itself to ensure that no income is uh, twice is taxed twice. So this is a very important concept that you will encounter uh, in in your career. I, in in your career, once you if if you decide to pursue a career in tax, this is a, this is something you will definitely encounter in the UK tax paper. For this, this is as far as we go in terms of do, double taxation agreements. But we'll but we'll go this. But we will explore this in greater detail in the advanced taxation paper. And this is a very important concept for an eventual career in taxation. So you can choose to explore this further on your own. Finally, tax avoidance versus tax evasion. So this is an area that might be tested in the exam. And if you understand this, you will, you will get the uh, two or four marks that, that, uh, that they're asking. It's very simple. And the difference between the two is important because uh, of the legal implications. Now tax evasion is an action by a tax, uh, is any action by taxpayer to evade taxes by illegal means. This is for suppressing information. Ki agar unne, they fail to declare the taxable income. Unke koi income hai, but they declare nahi ki tax return. Mein. Ya fir they have provided false information. That is, if uh, ka expense hai, to unne ka expense dikha diya hai. So that is false information and that is completely and utterly illegal uh, under the UK tax system. And if you're caught uh, on tax evasion, you will have you carry the risk of very heavy fines, but also imprisonment so tax evasion is illegal on the other hand tax avoidance is is a way of reducing your tax liability through legal means through mechanisms available in the tax law itself for example interest income from what is known as individual savings accounts is tax free in the uk so aap kuch income transfer kar sakte ho individual savings accounts mein and aur usse jo interest aa raha hai wo aapki tax free income ho jayegi Similarly, aap, you can delay the disposal of an asset in a later year to get uh, to avail the exemption that might be available. So this is these are mechanisms that are available within the law, and there are perfectly legal mechanisms. So jahan aap kuch illegal nahi kar rahe ho, but you are able to reduce your tax liability within the legal uh, uh, framework that is given in the tax law. That is tax avoidance, and that's different from uh, tax evasion. Now HMRC also realizes that there are there are some loopholes that are constantly being used to avoid taxes, and they have uh, issued some guidance on how to sort of plug these loopholes. And they've also introduced a general anti-abuse rule to counter 
abuse of uh, these loopholes so hmrc understands ki bahut sare aise legal mechanisms hain jahan pe tax liability bahut reduce ho jati hai aur usko counter karne ke liye bhi unhone mechanisms introduce kare hain but the crux of the matter is tax evasion is reducing taxes through illegal means while tax avoidance is reducing taxes through perfectly legal means so let's go a quick illustration around this and this is the kind of question you can expect in an exam as well in the exam as well so we have to identify whether the following taxes are tax avoidance or tax evasion now selling a capital asset in may 22 instead of march 22 to ensure that the capital gain is taxed in a later tax year now anybody wants to answer why it's tax avoidance or tax evasion anybody okay this is an example of tax avoidance because it only amounts to a change in timing to maybe take advantage of tax allowances in a later year what is the second one altering a bill of 700 to reach 7000 so that a larger tax deduction deduction is claimed on your tax return unne 700 ka bill ko 7000 dikha diya so unke expenses 6300 se badh gaye aur unki tax liability utni reduce ho gayi to ye tax avoidance hai ya tax evasion hai guys come on anybody it's tax evasion absolutely it's tax evasion because it's uh altering paperwork and submitting false information so this is completely illegal and this is tax evasion now uh, thirdly moving funds into a individual savings account so that interest can be earned tax free this tax evasion or tax avoidance we covered this just 2 minutes earlier anybody this is tax avoidance because this is a mechanism that is available in the in the uk tax law to minimize your tax liability under the uh, uk tax system an individual saving interest from an individual savings account is tax free so usne thode paise transfer kar diye so that usko interest income tax free mile this is very simple so is the kind of question you can expect in the exam as well right and guys i want uh, i would want you guys to participate more so that it's okay if you're wrong we can always correct it but it's important that your concepts are clear and we have a collaborative atmosphere so that you're ready for the eventual exam now lastly there's a topic as professional and ethical guidance right now this is something that is consistent across all papers of the acca and this is something that would also these are certain values that you must imbibe as an acca professional in your uh, these are ideas and principles that you must internalize and must be core to you all of you by the time you become and qualify as an acca this is uh, all of us uh, at fintram all of us in the profession hold these principles very dearly uh, uh, dearly to us and you must do the same now why alex can do why because accountants our acs here they often act for taxpayers in dealings with hmrc right you will go you will file tax returns with them you will represent them in case, in terms of case, in, in cases against them so their responsibility should be towards both clients and hmrc an acs member must uphold standards of the profession which are that is adopting an ethical approach to work employees and clients acknowledge the professional duty to society as a whole maintaining an objective outlook and provide professional standards of service conduct and performance at all times right so the acca code of conduct code of ethics and conduct set out five principles to meet the above expectations these are expectations as i said these are values that we hold very dearly and everybody uh, qualifying or preparing for acca must imbibe these values internally and make sure that these are core to you by the time you qualify as an accf this is also very important because these uh, being able to demonstrate these values and these principles would help you get some extra marks 
in the advanced uh, papers of ACCA. So these are very, so it's important in that sense as well. So the first is objectivity. Objectivity is that ACCA members should never allow bias or conflicts of interest to override objectivity. So if we are dealing with any issue, our objective is to understand the issue from a technical or a professional standpoint, not be due to our relationship with that person or that client. That is objectivity. Professional competence and due care. ACCA members have a duty to remain abreast with the latest developments to provide appropriate advice to clients, and they should always adhere to professional standards when rendering services. See, hum, our advice to the clients can only be relevant as long as it's uh, updated and uh, as long as it's uh, updated as per the uh, ch uh, ch changing regulations. So you must always, always stay on top of the latest uh, changes in taxation and other developments in accounting and so on, so that your advice is completely appropriate. Professional behavior. Members should refrain from conduct, which will bring discredit to the profession. Guys, uh, understand that when you're an ACCA, you're always carrying the tag of the profession of the institute with you. So your conduct should reflect that at all times. Integrity, membership must act in an honest manner in all professional relationships and confidentiality. They must not disclose or use for personal purposes information received in a professional capacity. And these are very strong values and they will help you a great deal in your career once you're an ACCA. All the big multinationals, all the big four, they hold these values very dearly and their internal systems are geared to ensure that these uh, values and these principles are followed by every single employee. So if it's internalized to you, you will have absolutely no problem fitting into their culture. Right, so this was the first uh, chapter. Let's do a few quick MCQs so that you guys have an understand. So, uh, that, so I'm confident that you guys have retained what we've learned today, right? So which of this is the first, uh, and I want you guys to be participatory. It's okay if you're wrong, we'll, we'll, we'll correct any doubts that you may have. Which of this is a statutory legislation? Case law, an extra statutory concession, HMRC statements of practice, or Income Tax Act 2007? Come on, guys. Everybody, why don't you write you down your answers in the chat box? What's the correct answer? Marivanti wants to take a guess. Okay, Deeraj, anybody else? First, let me let, let me receive all the answers, and then anybody else wants to take a guess? Okay, so Deeraj is completely right. It's Income Tax Act of two thousand seven. Statutory legislation is a uh, tax uh, is is an act passed by the UK government by the UK Parliament. Everything else, case law, extra statutory concession, HMRC statements of practice, are either guidances or decisions made by courts. But anything that is passed by the UK Parliament, issued by the UK government, uh, and passed by the UK Parliament as a statutory legislation. In this case, it's only the Income Tax Act of two thousand seven. Okay. So another question. An ACCA member discovers that a client has deliberately not declared a source of income on their tax return. So a client ke income source hai, so tax return mein unhone disclose nahi kari hai. What in this case, which of the following statements is correct? The member should notify HMRC of the error immediately. B. The member should notify the client of the error and explain the potential consequences before considering ceasing to act. C, the member must immediately take a report to the National Crime Agency due to the possibility of money laundering and notify the client that they've done so. D, the member should cease to act for the client if they refuse to disclose the error and advise HMRC that they've ceased to act and the reason why. 
Why do you say D, Dheeraj? Um, because sir, uh, in the two perspective, correct answers that I thought were A and D. In the A, uh, it should notify to the end game. Uh, but the client already knows that he has done it deliberately, as they say. So uh, the member should stop acting on his behalf, should stop uh, taking his files, and should inform the HMRC to like conduct an audit on his reports and so on his filings. So you're on the right track, but uh, the answer is uh, B. A member B. cannot, yeah, B. Because the member cannot breach confidentiality of the client by disclosing their error to the HMRC without their permission. Right. This is again. There is, you have to maintain a balance between your responsibility towards the client and towards the HMRC. Right. So your first responsibility is towards the client. So you have to notify the client, explain the potential consequences, and that would be your first statement. That would be your first uh, point uh, point of action. In case of C, now they can discuss any possibility of a money laundering. With, uh, with the money laundering officer of the company, but they can never ever disclose the client. If they're reporting the uh, money laundering to the, to the HMRC or to the National Crime Agency, they can never uh, notify the client that they're doing that because that would amount to tipping off, right? And the, the client would then have enough time to save himself and that is wrong. So if they're... Uh, Reporting it to the National Crime Agency, they cannot tell the client about it, and they should not cons. They should not cease to act immediately. They should first notify the client of the error, and explain the potential consequences of the act, and then we will have a discussion whether. Uh, and then, based on the decision of the client, after we've had that conversation with him, we'll take uh, we'll take the next course of action. So these are certain qualitative aspects that you must understand about how to maintain your responsibility towards balance your responsibilities towards your client and HMRC. Yeah, Dheeraj, any, any doubts on this? No? Okay. So which of the following taxes are not paid by a company? A, income tax, B, corporation tax, C, national insurance contributions, and D, value added tax. Harsh, you said D. Why do you say D? So actually all the other taxes are paid by the company, but VAT is only paid by the final customer. That's why I said D. And David, why do you say A? Um, because I feel it's the only tax that company doesn't pay. Uh, you have written that it is paid by on the self-employed income, but that is also paid in the individual tag instead of a company. So Dheeraj is right. Harsh, uh, uh, while uh, uh, value added tax is paid by all the goods that are purchased uh, by anybody. So even if a company is purchasing those goods, he will have they will have to pay the VAT on those goods to the supplier. So they do pay VAT. They obviously pay corporation tax. They pay national insurance contributions in respect of their employees, but they don't pay income tax. For them, income tax is corporation tax. So income tax is only paid by individuals and the corporation pays uh, corporation tax on their profits. So only income tax is in is in, uh, in in the four options. Only income tax is not paid by the company. The, all the other tax, corporation tax in respect of their profits, national insurance contribution in respect of their employees, and value added tax in respect of all the goods that they procure. So this was it. This was our session, guys. This is the kind of session you can expect in, in future sessions before the start of every session, we will do a quick revision of the previous session and uh, we will cover, this was a very small chapter. The later questions will be a lot, the later sessions will be a lot more len lengthier and we'll cover a lot of concepts. We'll do a lot more concept-based illustrations uh, to make sure that your concepts are reinforced. And we'll do uh, a, a few MCQs at the end of every session so that you can you get the idea of what uh, what kind of uh, multiple choice questions you can expect in the exam, right? So this was it. Any doubts you have on this session? Any doubts you have 
on the curriculum, the exam structure, uh, the kind of package that the uh, Fintran team is offering, uh, please feel free to ask me. Any comments, any observations that you have, anything you feel I'm, I can do better or I can do uh, differently, please feel free to tell me. Uh, so thank you for the great session. It was really interactive. Uh, just one doubt that what would be the frequency of classes in a week and would it be on weekdays also or just the weekends? So it would be weekdays again because we have a lot of ground to cover. We'll have weekday sessions and week, weekend sessions as well. We'll keep the week, weekday sessions early in the morning so you have your whole day free. You can rest a bit after the sessions and then start to uh, revise and go on with your day and then uh, come up with any doubts that you may have. So we'll have four sessions a week most likely Tuesday or Thursday, and then we'll have two classes in uh, on Saturday and Sunday. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Dheeraj. Any other questions? No, no sir. Other... Yeah. Harsh, you were saying something? Uh, yeah, I said no, sir. No other questions. OK. Great, guys. So I hope to see all of you in our sessions uh, that will start very soon. So you reach out to the Fintran team. You look at, you can register on their websites and you can obviously uh, catch up with me on LinkedIn uh, and check out the kind of work that I've been doing. So great. All the best, guys. I look forward to see you all in the live session starting very soon. Thank you. Thank you all.